What's up guys? We are back with another Masters of the Universe Masterverse review and we are taking a look at Skeletor, but this is not any Skeletor. This is our new adventure Skeletor and I'm really excited for this one because I know it's not high on most people's lists. I do really love this cartoon, it has a lot of nostalgia for me, and I really like this design for Skeletor. Now he comes in our standard Masterverse style box, of course, so you've got that sort of goofy shaped box with the Eternian hieroglyphs all over it. He's in the window. Still not a big fan of this hieroglyph type thing. I just don't think it's very exciting. One spine gives us his name. The other spine gives us a cool shot of artwork. The back gives us cross sell for the recent wave of figures. And then you've also got another shot of artwork. No bio this time around though. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our Masterverse New Adventures Skeletor. I know this is not the Skeletor that everybody wants or that this show is not the one everybody has nostalgia for or the one that people really like, but I do have a lot of nostalgia for this show. I was, you know, old enough, young enough, depending on how you want to describe it, to be invested in this one when it actually came about. He-Man started before I was even born, so it became a thing for me in reruns and the tail end of the show, but this show was on when I was a kid. So it's definitely something that I remember watching. I had the sword, I had a bunch of the figures, none of it survived my childhood, but I really like some of these designs and I like these characters and I like this version of Skeletor just because it's, it's different, it's weird, it's spacey, and this does make for a pretty solid Masterverse figure. There's really only one thing that I'm gonna gripe about with this entire figure. It's kind of a big thing, but overwhelmingly, this is a really solid uh, figure. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. He's very par for the course with Masterverse, but there's also some changes to this guy, or at least it feels like there's some changes for the better. So we've got a head that can look up. He can look down really, really good. You've got a little bobble, but not much, and then you've got your rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders. They rotate. We got our bicep swivel. We've got our double jointed elbows. You've got rotation. You've got hinges at those wrists. Torso is the area that I really like on this guy because one of the issues for the longest time with this line is that the torso cut just didn't really do a whole lot. It would spin, but it never really stayed in place. It would rubber band back. So he goes backwards and he crunches forwards. Now this breastplate is gonna get in the way a little bit, but it doesn't connect to anything but the pecs. So it does come over top of the body. You've got tilt and it sticks, it stays. And this is also your rotation point. He doesn't seem to have an actual waist twist down there, but he doesn't need it either. Legs go out about that far. They kick forward about that far. This is like, this is probably one of the areas of articulation that's a concern because, well, his legs just don't kick forward that far because of the design of how low this crotch piece sits. It hits that thigh meat pretty quick. Nothing really backwards. You've got your thigh twist there. You got double jointed knees with really good range. You do have a boot cut because there is a boot cut there. And then we've got hinges, which are pretty solid, but the rocker on him is a little bit um, minor here because there's just no clearance. He hits these like stirrups that are on the side of the boots, which this is probably my, my biggest gripe with articulation. I can deal with the thigh issue, not kicking the leg all the way forward, but this does pose, no pun intended, uh, issues when you're moving him around. Otherwise though, I mean, I do think he moves pretty well, especially in comparison to those older Masterverse figures. I say older, like this line is super, super old, but you know, the earlier figures did have some restrictions not to mention the fact that they couldn't even stand really well. Like their arms couldn't sit down to their chest and things like that have been changed and they look a little bit more, I don't know, correct in many ways. But I do like the updates to the torso on this one in particular, just to be able to move it around and not expect it to go back to a stoic position. What I really like about this guy though, and you, know, you knew it was coming from a mile away, I'm sure, is the look, the visuals on this guy, because that's what makes this Skeletor so interesting to me is the way he looks. There were two different versions of New Adventure Skeletor, and I really would love to see them tackle the second form as well. But this looks really, really close to, in many ways, in many ways to the show, but also to the vintage figure, which I unfortunately don't have to do any kind of comparison to. It's also more in line, you know, with his actual size and proportions compared to, say, how the Classics figure was. Because, of course, the Classics figure was a big, beefy Skeletor, and that's not what this Skeletor was. He was muscular, but he wasn't huge. So this one maybe sort of corrects his proportions in many ways. But I really like the color scheme on him. I love the powder blue for the skin. I mean, that's, that's not new for Skeletor in many ways to have that kind of color scheme. 
but I like the techie bits. The paint job, what he what he does have painted anyway, is pretty solid, very clean, especially on the torso here. I would have loved to have seen more of that silver on the arms and specifically on the back here because there's so, so much sculpt back here that is left untouched. I don't necessarily mind it, but it would also have looked really cool to, you know, flip that cape around and just see like this mess of cybernetics all painted up. Something that I think I would love to do myself, but I know I never would. Like, you've got stuff underneath here, so you've got a little little bit of sculpt work on the abs and underneath the, the breastplate a little bit. Really like all this, you know, adornments and the, the stuff that's sort of bolted onto him on the legs down here. And it just makes for a very familiar look, but also something that's very unique for Skeletor as well. This bright pink color scheme that he has also is a little bit different, and I think I like that in contrast to the blue. It just, it makes each color pop. Now he does have a cape, and this is the thing I'm gonna gripe about because as much as I think this is a really solid Skeletor, like I really, really think this is a good figure, this might be one of the worst capes I have seen in just a long, long time. And a lot of that is is the material it's made out of. I mean, it's obviously not wired. This is a retail release. It's obviously not wired, which is its own problem because you can't pose it at all. The, the material is super, super thin, like you can see through it in the right lighting, and it connects via this ring. So the, the actual cape is threaded around the ring, and then the ring just sits around his neck. This really isn't how this is supposed to be connected to him. The actual cape sat around his neck like a cape. This doesn't. This is just something hanging off the back of his neck. So as a result, despite the fact that you know it's not wired, you could potentially have maybe posed it somewhat if it was actually wrapped around his neck. But since it's just sort of sitting back there, you can't really do anything with it, and it wants to just sort of collapse in on itself. So as much as I don't like buying custom capes for figures that cost, you know, 20, 25 bucks because they end up doubling the price of the figure in many cases, I feel like I want to do that here because I know it would elevate this guy into something so, so much more exciting because that cape just sucks. It's just not good. And that's it's not weird for Masterverse to have bad capes, but this one just seems particularly egregious to me. He does, however and in many ways in contrast to that cape being so bad, have a really solid head sculpt. And that's for two reasons. One, the helmet is removable. So you've got his, his space bucket here, his space helmet. You got the skull on there. It's got some wash on it. It's not just, you know, this plain sort of like gunmetally color. There is a little bit of paint to bring out some of that sculpted line work. It fits on his head really, really well. Doesn't get in the way of articulation either. But it does, unfortunately, hide what is maybe one of the cooler Skeletor head sculpts. I love this head for him. You've got all this, like, sort of cybernetics bracketed on the back of his skull, wrapping around to the front. You've got blues, you've got greens, you've got the bone, and then he's got the sunken eyes with the red, the black, black nose, and then a little bit of wash on those teeth just to bring them out. But I think the head sculpt is tremendous. It's a really solid head. Again, I know this isn't the Skeletor that everybody thinks of when they think of Skeletor, but this is a cool design. It's a skull face, very much techno space looking guy with a cape, despite how bad the cape is. It's a cool looking figure and it definitely works for what they're going for in the confines of Masterverse. Now, as far as accessories goes, we don't get a lot on this guy. You get a couple things, but we get like the signature things. Of course, the helmet, I guess, could be considered an accessory because you don't have to use it. So there's one maybe. We do get an extra set of hands. So he's got gripping hands on him in the box. You get a set of fists. We don't get any weird shield holding hand or any of that kind of nonsense. And then we get his staff. So this is, you know, like the Havoc staff basically from New Adventures. So it's got a spike on the bottom. And then you've got this very techno looking uh, skull topper up here, which is done up very similarly to the helmet. So it's this sort of swirly metallic silvery gray color with a little bit of a wash over top just to bring it out, bring out some of those details. And it is nicely sized. He could hold it well in one hand or two which of course is why he has two gripping hands. But I do really like this. It's it's kind of a quintessential thing for this particular version of Skeletor. So he doesn't come with a lot of stuff, but he comes with kind of the bare minimum of what I need. You've got the, the cool weapon and you've got some extra hands if he needs to duke it out with He-Man. So yeah, overall, this is a really solid figure. And I feel like in many ways, right, that Masterverse is finally hitting its stride. I've been a fan of the line since it started, but it has, without a doubt, and there's no argument here, has gotten better since it started. We are seeing the best figures thus far in the line, and this guy is right up there with them. He has one major flaw, and it's one that can be corrected when it comes to that cape. I don't like having to do that, 
but this cape does absolutely suck. It's one of the worst capes I've seen in the longest time. It's just so awkward and goofy, but the rest of this figure is great. There has definitely been some changes to the engineering and design on these bodies to make them seem just a little bit more natural, stand a little better, work those torsos a little bit better. Not to mention the fact that this is a really solid interpretation of this version of Skeletor in this line. It looks very similar to the source material and of course to the vintage figure. Comes with a couple accessories, nothing too crazy, but at the end of the day it's about everything you truly need. So that's going to do it for this look at the Masterverse New Adventures Skeletor. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.